He's been there. He's done that. This is a Q&A kind of deal. He's going to be demonstrating, you know, team rope and talking about the time machine. But uh, y'all give a hand for my friend, Mr. Walt Woodard, right here. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, what, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk about some things that... Uh, uh, that I that I had questions about when I was growing up because I started roping before the internet and before uh, you know I mean my son gives me trouble because he said they were hauling horses in wooden trailers when I started but I mean it's been a while but you couldn't look at the computer there was no computer there was no internet there was no Facebook and Twitter and all those different things and there wasn't any videos and there wasn't any roping schools to go to you just had to try to you know, figure it out. And, and it was really difficult. It was really, really hard. So what I did is I finally got to a point where nothing made sense to me. And I got so confused about learning how to rope that I, I finally decided that if it wasn't logical, I wasn't going to do it. And, and the way that it came to a, to a head for me, like <clears throat> when I was a kid, if I ever missed a steer, it was because I dropped my elbow or I didn't follow through. Dropped your elbow. I told my, I missed a steer one time. I asked my dad, I said, what did I do wrong? He said, dropped your elbow. I said, dropped to where? He said, it was down. I said, how low? He said, it was low. I said, where's it supposed to be? He said, up. I said, how high? He said, high. Well, what, what does that mean? And why does my elbow have anything to do with my hand or my loop? And why wouldn't you tell me what to do with my loop? And then wouldn't my hand and my elbow and my shoulder and all my pieces be in the right spot? Or I didn't follow through. And I asked my dad one time, I said, Dad, <clears throat> if I let go of my rope, when the tip of the rope is going the wrong direction and really follow through, how come it doesn't go on there? You know what he said? Dropped your elbow. I realized right there that my dad didn't have a clue what he was talking about. No one ever told me that the reason that you missed is because you let go of your rope when the tip of the rope was going the wrong direction. And all the follow through in the world won't help that. Because the reason that I can rope that chair is because I let go of my rope when the tip of the rope is going in the direction that I want it to go in when I open my hand. So if I let go of it when the tip is going the wrong way, I can follow through all day long and it still won't go on the chair. So that's why I started asking questions like that, but it all came to a head one time. When I was young, <clears throat> my dad told me, he said, when you ride your horse in the box, turn towards the steer. So I would ride my horse in the box and I would turn him towards the steer and he would spin his butt out of the corner and he would back in the wrong corner. And I would look at my dad and my dad said, turn left. So I'd ride forward and I would ride my horse in and I would turn him left and he would spin his butt out of the corner. So I went to my dad because it didn't make sense. I went to my dad and I said, why am I turning my horse left in the box? He said, because Bob Winslow said to turn left in a box. And Bob was the guy that roped where we roped. So I went to Bob and I said, why do you turn your horse left in a box? He said, because Kenny Beale said turn his horse left in a box. I went to Kenny. I said, Kenny, why do you turn your horse left in a box? He said, my horse won't turn right. <laughs> That's why we're all turning left because Kenny's horse won't go the other way. Because it never made sense to me. It made more sense to turn to the right because if I rode my horse in a box and turned to the right, I could get his butt going in the direction that I wanted to go in and then I could back him in the corner. So I told him, and, and I was raised at a different time by, by, by a different group of people when you, you, didn't, you didn't get a rebuttal. If my dad said, go to bed at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, it was non-negotiable. You just went to bed. You never dared ask a question or challenged any kind of authority. So I told my father, I said, I'm going to be respectful, but from now on, if it's not logical, I'm not doing it. If you can't explain to me how to do these things, I'm not doing it anymore. And so I started working on the reasons that people couldn't catch. Couldn't, and, and so I started putting roping schools on when I was about, when I was 19 years old. So I've been doing it for 39 years, and I've had a lot of experience, and, a lot of, and, I, and I know what won't work, and I know what not to say, and I've had a little success with what does, what does work. And the number one reason, there's four main reasons that people can't heal, and there's about the same as a the reason they can't head, but the number one reason that people can't heal and head is because they can't get in position, stay in position for a series of swings before they throw their rope. And people, a famous saying at a roping school is people say, I missed my shot. Well, there's no such thing in roping. 
and hunting elk there is and hunting deer there is because you're in a tree stand and you're hoping something comes by and you missed your shot because you were looking at your whatever you were looking at but you missed your shot and roping you're creating shots because you're kicking your feet and you're moving your left hand so you're creating shot after shot after shot so there's no such thing as oh I missed my shot so people throw as soon as they get there and 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 people will well when they're at a roping school None of those count. None of those count. A shot is a series of swings in position. And people will get up here, they'll try and try, and they'll get up here, and they'll take one swing and fire a shot and miss. And I never could figure out why people do that. Well, I think I know now, because you think to yourself, I might not ever get this close again. I better get me a shot while I'm here. And pretty soon, your horse plays tag, and that is as soon as he touches his nose to your tailhead, what's he do? He stops right there because that's where you throw every time. And somebody says, oh, the reason that he stops is because you lean. Do you ever heard that? Oh, he stops because you lean. That was started by a drunk and a bar. It has nothing to do with why he stops. You think that's a universal command for a horse to stop because you lean? Next time your horse starts bucking, lean over and see if he stops. Boy, well, almost had you bucked off, but you leaned over to the last second and he shut it all down right there. I mean, who started that and who bought into it? So that's the kind of stuff that I started to challenge that didn't make sense to me, and so I started disproving those things and trying to share those things with other people. So that's the number one reason. And another thing I found out at Roping Schools, I made up my mind a couple years ago <clears throat> that I wasn't going to get any more hateful letters from Roping Schools. No more. Because about, I get about three hateful letters a year from people. Because when I go to a roping school, I'm actually trying to get somebody better. I actually feel like I have a responsibility because they've spent a day off work or two days off work. They've driven a long distance. They're, they're paying a certain fee to get there. I mean, I come from a different generation where you had to work hard for $400 or $500. So I, I take it upon myself that I've got to make this person better. I have people right up to me at those schools and the best way to get a hateful letter at a roping school is tell somebody what they think about their horse. People ride up to me and say, see this horse? Yep, raised this horse. Yeah, owned his mother and father and I just love him. What do you think about him? I love him too. I mean, who doesn't know the answer to that question? Anyone would know what I'm supposed to say. But I, I didn't know that I was supposed to say that. I thought you actually wanted me to tell you what I thought about your horse. Because when I, I, I make a living roping. So at my house, when I catch a horse out of a pen and I lead him over to saddle, guess what I'm thinking about? I'm thinking about where the, is this horse weak? Where, what do I need to improve on this horse so that I can win more? So when you ask me about your horse... I say, well, he, he doesn't score, and he won't rate, and when you try to dally, he ducks off, he won't pull, he faces terrible, and he jumps up and down like a rabbit after the run. I hate him, and you send me a letter. What? How does that work? I don't even understand that, and my son says that I don't fit into modern society, and maybe I don't. But so now when people ask me about their horse, I say, nah, what do you want to hear? Because if you're doing the deal, I love him too. But if you really want me to tell you what I think and what's holding you back, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you that too. And it's not God, it's just one man's opinion of what I think about your horse based on me trying to make a living roping. So that's the number one reason that people can't catch. And, and, and another thing, I... I tell people all the time at the roping schools, we have a little thing, and we, we have goober t-shirts, and you can't buy a goober t-shirt, you got to earn a goober t-shirt. And it says, I am a goober on the back. And the, way you, the best way to earn a goober t-shirt is if you come to a roping school and you say, I hate slow steers. I, okay, listen to this. You know why you hate slow steers? Because your horse won't what? Won't rate. He won't rate. Guess how you win a major event? Right in the middle of it, God gives you a slow steer. The last year I rodeoed, I healed for Jake Barnes' first partner and Trevor Brazil's second partner. Can you imagine going to a rope in our rodeo and look over at Trevor and say, I hope we don't get the slow one today. <laughs> I mean, who started saying that and who got away with saying it? See what I mean? That's, 
I hope we get the biggest, fattest, fastest one, Trevor. Me too. I mean, who says that? So anyway, that's something, a little deal that I think got started and I disagree with. Um, the second reason that people can't rope consistently is that they don't back their horse up before they deliver. And, and I know that sounds like a simple thing, but when you heal and you get ready to deliver your rope, as you start to deliver, your horse should slow down and the steer starts to leave you. If you watch the rodeo tonight, and I'm sure we all will, even if you watch it in one of the casinos, you'll see as the healer's rope, the steers are moving away from them. And what happens when you're roping at home is you'll follow a steer across the arena and you've decided to throw, but your horse don't know you're gonna throw. So you throw your rope and then he tries to stop, but it's too late because your rope has already got there. So your loop goes in and it falls over or your tip hits the ground. You have to give your horse a preparatory command. You have to tell him, hey, I'm thinking about throwing. You got to think about stopping because if you wait till it goes by his face, he'll stop too late. Now, that sounds simple. Why is that so hard? Because of this. That's why that's so hard. Because our hands aren't made to... That's how our hands want to work. So it's really hard to heal and make this hand go out and down and this one come back. And that's what has to happen. When this one starts down, that one's got to start back. So he just slows down and stops. And a horse is not supposed to back up. A horse is just supposed to stop. Because, oh, I want my horse to run backwards. Dallying is hard enough. Dallying is hard enough for that horse running backwards. He's supposed to stop. Now, he or horse should be able to back up. But if he's got to back up during the run, somebody's made a major mistake, haven't they? The header's either faced on a loose rope or the healer's dallied on a loose rope and then your horse back up. But I have people all the time say, oh, I, I cut my finger off or I hurt my hand. Yeah, you get your horse running backwards and you're open with a low number guy that's going too fast. That's just a recipe for disaster, right? Okay, so that's two. The third reason is that people can't feel their tip. And I didn't know that when I started putting on rope and schools. When I started putting on rope and schools, I told people the key to the delivery I said, I got the key to the delivery. The key to the delivery is you got to hang on to the rope until you feel the tip start to go under the feet before you let go of your rope. That's the key to the delivery. And that's what I said. Everywhere I went when I was a young guy and started putting on rope schools, I said, that's the key to the delivery. Hang on to the rope until you feel the tip start to go under the feet before you let go. Had a guy come to school one time. He walked up to me. He said, I'm the worst heater you ever had. I said, I've had some bad ones. He said, I'm the president of their club. He said, I'm terrible. I said, what's the matter? He said, my rope won't go under at all. I said, well, I have the key to the delivery. He said, well, I got the lock, baby. He said, whip it on me. I said, the key to the delivery is, I said, you got to hang on to the rope until you feel the tip start to go under before you open your hand. He said, okay. I stood in front of the sawhorse. He stood right here, and he went just like this. And I said, no, no. I said, hang on to the rope until you feel the tip start to go under before you open your hand. He said, okay. I said, listen to me. I said, hang on to the rope until you feel the tip start under. He looked at me, he said, it doesn't matter how slow you say the words, I don't feel the dip. He said, now what would that feel like? He said, I can feel this piece, but I don't feel that other piece you're talking about. Oh my goodness, I didn't know what to say. About three weeks I went to roping schools and I told people, I said, when you get a funny feeling, just fire a shot, just let her go. If you couldn't feel the tip, how would you know when to open your hand? So I started asking people, can you feel the tip? And guess what I heard? I don't know. How would you know? Here's how you know. And this is not a trick. Anyone that can feel the tip can do this. This is not a wow thing. If you can feel the tip of your rope, you can make your rope go through that hole. Because the rope does not come in broadsided. It doesn't come in like that. It comes in tip first. So that means I've got to stop my hand and wait for the tip to get ahead of my hand so the tip leads it under there. I know, isn't that crazy? But I, was, I wasn't taught that. I was taught follow through. You've got to follow through. So I would throw like that. Yeah. And that's a great loop if the steer was to back up. Right? Because I got rope behind him. That means that this piece is still ahead of this piece. But that's not, that's not how it has to, has to happen. There has to be a place in the swing where this piece stops and this piece gets ahead of that piece. The tip has got to get ahead of your hand. Listen to this. I had a rope in school one time, and I do some motivational speaking for corporations about attitude, and, and I had a, and, and you always know that there, you have a problem. When you do a motivational talk, and there's somebody there, and they got their arms crossed and their legs crossed, and they never laugh, and they never smile, there's a problem. So anyway, I do this rope in school, and there's a blonde woman sitting there, and she's about 50 years old. 
And she's got her arms crossed, legs crossed, never grins, never smiles. She just stands there and stares at me the whole time. So I finished my opening lecture. It takes about an hour and 15 minutes. She walks up to me and she says, don't help me at all. I says, why? She says, I hate healing. I said, why are you here? She said, my husband made me come here and she said, I hate him too. <laughs> oh, gosh. I said, what's the matter? She said, I miss every time. I said, out of 10 series, she said, I miss 10 in a row. And she said, I follow through to my left breast every single time. And that's what they taught her to do. They had taught her to follow through to the left side of her body every single time she threw a rope. Okay, what I came away with that was, if that's wrong with your left breast idea is wrong, which it is, it should be as far from your left breast as you can get. So it has to stop away from your, the left side of your body. I have to stop my hand and wait for the tip to transfer ahead of my hand. So I push my hand as far away from my left side as I can and wait, oh, and didn't hang on long enough, and wait for the tip to go in the direction that I want it to go in before I open my hand. So you just gotta wait for it to go under. So anyway, that's what I started to tell people to do. Wait, well, see, my hand is not by my left breast. It's not even by the left side of my body. And I almost had that figured out once when I was a kid, but I, mi I missed a steer, and the guy said, you miss because you let go out here. And I confused out here and too early as meaning the same thing. I let go in the right place. I just let go at the wrong time. I got a real fancy phone that my son made me get, and there's a woman that lives in my phone. And her name is Siri, and you, you, you can't ask her a question that she doesn't know. She is so smart. And when you ask her a question and you thank her, she said, your thanks is all the, all the, the, the or your, your pleasure is all the thanks I need. I would love to marry her sister. I mean, she's just a wonderful person. And I asked her one day, I said, the definition of pendulum, the definition of pendulum, and she said, it, well, all it is is it's stopping the, an apparatus and waiting for the, for the, the momentum of the, of the pendulum to carry under, but you have to stop the apparatus, right? You understand? All I'm doing is I'm just stopping the apparatus, but, but the pendulum under the influence of gravity continues to go. True? I changed my mind right there. I decided not to deliver. I've decided to change my mind. But I can't stop the pendulum. It's going to keep going. So then once the pendulum gets going in the direction that I want it to go in, then I open my hand. And that's as far from follow through as you can possibly get. And no one knew that when I was a kid. Nobody could explain that to me. But that's how I deliver. People say, thank God I head. <laughs> no. No. When I first started putting on rope in schools and I seen headers throw this loop, I thought you were just jacking around. Ah. You know how early you got to let go of your rope to miss the entire head of the steer? That's dangerous because you might have to tell your healer, get back. Ain't no telling where this baby mom will able to fire a shot just at any moment. I have no idea where the tip of my rope is going. Because if you ask a great header, this, a header that can really rope, and you said, hey, come in here and just rope the right horn of that steer, they would say, well, why are we just catching the right one? Why, why do you want me to do that? And the reason he can do that is because he can feel what? Yeah, so he knows exactly when to let go of his rope, so he just lets go of it early and he just catches the right horn. So that's why so many ropers just catch the right horn instead of the left horn. But if you said, I want you to catch both horns, then he would hang on just a little bit longer and then we go on the left horn. So that's all because you can't feel the tip. And then the last step that why people can't heal is because they can't get in time. They don't know what time, he, well, they, they can't get in time, okay? I have a son, and he's a hot shot roper, and we have a great relationship. But he got after me a couple years ago. He said, Dad, you don't teach timing enough at roping schools. It was about three years ago. He said, you don't teach timing at roping schools. Because I had given up on it. I had given up on teaching timing. So I decided to teach timing. And because of his influence, I've decided to teach you good people timing today. Are you ready? When the steer's front feet are all the way forward, and his hind feet are all the way back, when his hind feet start to come forward, throw your rope. Feel better? I'm glad we cleared that up. <laughs> Easy concept to talk about, but extremely difficult to do that. You know what's the key to riding a saddle bronc horse tonight when you watch the rodeo? When a horse's front feet are on the ground, where will the riders be? Feet will be forward. When the horse leaves the ground, he pulls them back. Horse's front feet hit the ground, he puts them forward, right? He's in time. Any questions? Let's flank one. Bet you can't do that. You know what I think about when a horse is bucking? He's bucking. <laughs> So I can't even think about pulling his head up, let alone putting my feet forward. But that's timing. 
Okay, so I did an experiment a couple years ago at the U.S. Finals, and kids won every rope at the U.S. Finals. There was two of them that they didn't win. They didn't win the gold plus, and they didn't win the century. Know why? Not allowed to enter. That fixed them. They didn't win those two ropings, but they won almost every other roping. You know why? They know how to get in time. They know how to get in time. And you know why they know how to get in time? Because they rope each other in the parking lot. They follow each other around, and they play a game called the inside leg game. You ever played it? Come out here. Leave your rope there. And here's what I want you to do. Come right here. And you're going to walk right over there towards that guy right there holding that soda pop. I think that's what that is. Okay, so every time, I want you to take one step out with this foot. Stay, stop. Okay, so every time his foot is back, my tip is going to be down. Every time this foot is going to be, his left foot's going to be forward, my tip is going to be down. So I want you to take long, slow steps. Ready? Take off. Down, 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 down. Down, 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 got him. That's timing. Stop right there. Now, when you go to Ropens, you look out in a parking lot, and what do you see? Kids playing that game, right? They're playing that game, and they're roping each other. That's how they learn timing. How many times do you ever go to a rope, and you look out in a parking lot, and there's two six-year-old men roping each other? All right, Larry, you take off. And Larry takes off, and Bob's after him trying to catch his feet. They won't do it. So because they won't do it, they've not learned timing. They've never learned how to. Well, the World Series has figured it out. They don't let them rope, the dirty little buggers. Right? They just said, if you're not 21, you can't play in the club. That fixed them. Now we can remain crummy for the rest of our lives. We don't have to get any better, right? Okay, so that's how they eliminated that problem. So adults won't rope the inside leg game. We've proven that. It doesn't happen. I went to the U.S. Finals this year, looked in the parking lot, never seen adults playing the game. So that we already know it. They won't rope a goat. That's how Patrick Smith learned how to get in time, roping a goat. Have you ever seen a goat or chased one of them little buggers around? Oh, it's an annoying thing. And so I'm not going to do that. And that's how he learned how to do that. Okay, so we're not going to do that. The next thing is a lead steer, a track steer, a steer that you track around. And they call him a lead steer, but it's really not a lead steer. It's just a great big gentle steer that just gallops around at the back end of your arena. And you get behind him, and every time his legs are back, you swing it down and swing it down. But you go out there one day, and your lead steer goes too fast. And then the next day, he trots. And then one day, he won't come off the fence. And it's just miserable. So, but, but this timing, and I want to explain it to you before we talk about the machine. Oh. And people said to me when I was a kid, you gotta crank it up. When healers rope, they crank it up. That's not, that's not true. That's not true. If you ask a saddle bronco tonight, behind the, a saddle bronco rider behind the bucket chute, you say, how fast are you gonna spur this bronc? What would he say? Fast as he bucks, right? He wouldn't say 27 miles per hour. There's no certain time you're gonna swing your rope. You're gonna be in time with the motion of the horse. So I don't know how fast I'm going to swing it, but he's going to walk faster this time, and my swing is going to be in coordination with his tip or his leg. Walk. Back. 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 Down. Back. Down. Back. Down. Back. Got him. That's timing. Okay, stay right there. I should be so good at that move over just a little bit. Right there. I should be so good at that as I can rope him as he trots by. Trot by. Trot. Trot. With no swings. Little short stepping sucker. <laughs> the hell, go over there and sit down. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, that's timing. That's, that's just timing. And all it is is just hand eye coordination. Okay, so with that said, when I was a kid, they told me to tie the sawhorse up off the ground. You ever heard that? Tie the sawhorse up off the ground. You know what I said? Steer don't look like that when I throw at him. He's not off the ground. You know why? Because I couldn't play that game. I knew that was wrong. If I tie that horse up off the ground and I practice sweeping my rope under the side, how's that going to work when I rope a steer and I'm not able to get in time? That was just a logical question that somebody should have asked. So when them feet are off the ground and you haven't got the ability to get in time, that's not going to work for you. Because you can bring your rope in from the side all day long, except when you throw and you're out of time, it's going to hit the front legs. And it's going to hit the leg that's on the ground, and your rope's going to fall over. Or you're going to rope the right leg, because you get as much rope in front of the leg as you get behind the leg. It doesn't work. 
Okay, so I started working on timing and I started teaching people timing. So I went to the roping schools with the sleds that, had, and this was about two and a half years ago, with the sleds that are in existence. And make sure you understand this. Make sure you know this. I am a fan of sleds. I love sleds. I think they're fantastic. I learned how to rope on a sled that my dad made out of a hot water heater that he found at the dump. Went to the dump one day and seen a hot water heater and brought it home and it was like he'd found a diamond ring. There's an iron tank inside this inside this hot water heater. My dad cut some legs and made some legs and some angle iron for skis and we pulled it behind a 56 Chevy that my mother had. And that's how I learned how to rope. And you know what I learned how to do? I learned how to get in position and stay in position. I learned how to turn my rope over on the outside of the right horn. I learned how to put a dowel on and follow. I learned how to, to, uh, to uh, rope and heel it and get my tip down and start my tip in and pull my slack and dally and slide some rope so if my mother didn't stop in the cart, didn't flip the sled upside down. I learned how to keep my horse straight and not let him quarter. I learned how to dally and follow when I, oh my goodness. I learned all kinds of things on that sled. But guess what I didn't learn? Timing, because the legs didn't move. So eventually you have to address that, right? You have to address that. Somebody has to start talking about that, that the legs have got to move so you can practice that. So how do you practice it? So I started trying to teach it at the schools with the sleds that was out, and guess what? Couldn't do it. You know why? Because every time that they were out of time and they, and they started trying to rope it, they would throw when the feet were all the way forward and they could still catch them. Because there's nothing to stop. Now, when you try to do that on the steers, guess what, it, guess what happens? You hit their front legs. Because when their hind leg is forward, their front leg is back, and you hit the front legs, and the rope won't go under. I had a rope in school in north of, Al of, uh, of uh, Calgary one time, about three and a half, three years ago, when this idea first came, par came upon me. And uh, I had one of the existing sleds that was in place, and we had eight healers, and all eight of them got three shots apiece at the sled. Guess how many they caught in a row? 24 in a row by both feet. 24 in a row. Every guy caught the sled every time. We started roping the steers at 1.30. We roped till 5.30. Not one guy caught one steer by both feet. And I'm not making those numbers up. I'm telling you the truth. Every guy missed. And one guy said, when are we going to rope that sled again? I said, never, never roping that sled again. Because you could just bring your rope in from the side and when the feet were all the way forward, nail it every time. That's not right. And then you don't. And one guy would look at me and say, was I in time that time? You were 180 degrees out of time. The feet were all the way forward and you still caught it. I thought about putting a dog collar on people when they threw out of time. Shock them! Stop shocking me. Well, stop throwing out of time and then I'll quit shocking you. But you've got to have something that tells you that you're doing it wrong. And that's what we came up with was. We came up with a sled because I came home and I told a friend of mine that's an engineer, I said, and I told him that story. He said, well, why can't people catch a steer when they're out of time? Because I said, they hit the front legs. He said, then why don't we make a sled that's got front legs? He said, that's a great idea. So you can't catch that. You understand? You can't be rewarded falsely if you throw out of time. Front feet are in the way. And there's not a sled like that. So everybody, oh, they try to hawk their sled. Oh, this is the best one, that's the best one. I mean, after teaching for 39 years, I know what holds people back, and that's one of the main things. Let me show you one more thing about this. Do you know what the key is to handle? My, my dad was a violent, fairly violent guy, and my dad headed, and I healed, and my father's favorite line was, I don't know why I head. I turn steer after steer, and nobody catches for me. And I always wanted to say, Dad, because you handle him so bad, Christ couldn't catch for you. But, but I knew not to say that because he, he was violent. So I didn't say anything. I hear it all the time, and so do you. Okay, you know what the two keys to handling a steer is? One is to dally on a tight rope. So when you rope this thing, getting your rope tight, even with your thighs, so when you dally, the rope wobbles. And then the second thing is bending the steer's neck while you're still parallel and seeing the steer's neck bend and being able to follow along with the neck bend and then stop your horse so the rope comes off. That's the key to handling a steer. I had a kid at the training center the other day. He said, do steer's necks bend like that? I said, yes, and you should know that. You should have seen that. So we make people run up to this thing and rope and follow it along and rope that thing and get their rope tight and then bend the neck and be able to follow along and then stop their horse. But I mean, that's, uh, that, those are two ideas that should have existed on sleds long ago and no one ever thought about it. So now we've thought about it. It's called the time machine and I am very proud of it. As a matter of fact, I own it. That's how much I believed in it. So 
I just wanted to show you that stuff, and everybody has a different idea about sleds, but to me, those are common sense ideas that I, when I was a kid, I wanted somebody to prove them to me, and, uh, and hopefully that uh, clears some of that stuff up. So they got all kinds of people in here, and I uh, really appreciate you taking the time to listen to me. Thank you very much. Ladies Thank and you. gentlemen, he's a world champion, Mr. Walt Woodard. Thank you.